Welcome or welcome back to the Asabado channel. Today, I want to talk a little bit about a, a few revelations that I had. They were just these kind of exciting, mind-blowing types of revelations that came from a conversation uh, that I had with a, with a really good friend of mine about some advice that I had given him. Uh, so I have a friend that's um, interviewing for a job. And so he's interviewing for this job. He's really excited about the job. And the job is a little bit of a, of, it's a move upwards for him. And so he asked me, hey, Sabado, I'm, I'm having these sets of interviews and I'd like to better understand the best way to approach some of these subjects and to answer the questions. And so what I mentioned to him is I said to him, um, you know, maybe what you, what you should do is, um, you know, approach it in this particular way. It's a higher level position. So we talked about strategy, we talked about planning, we talked about the way to broach those subjects and to tie it into a previous experience. And uh, long story short, at the end of that interview, he came back to me and said, you know, Salvador, I just want to tell you thank you because everything that uh, we talked about, I was able to prepare for in the interview and the interview went really well because I had all of these things that I prepared for in my back pocket. And I, and I felt really good about that. And so that, that gave me, uh, or that started a question in my mind that I want to share with you today. But before I go into that question, I want to tell you a little bit about myself um, and, and really what I think helps me uh, bring what I bring to the channel. I have over 100 videos and you'll see those down if you, if you take a look. But I, I want to talk to you a little bit about who I am. Um, I'm a, uh, and I have my notes here just so I stay on topic and, and keep things moving. But I'm, I'm 52 years old. I'm a retired um, human resources executive. So I sat as the chief human resources officer for uh, a, a fairly a large organization, as well as I was the head of HR for some other hospitals and health systems as well. So, you know, I really have a, a particular viewpoint as it relates to looking at issues of early retirement or just of work in general. Um, when you when you when you look at just general employment and, and the types of dynamics and things that go on from an employment perspective, um, you know, in this in, in times of economic strife and, and layoffs, I have a, a very particular uh, viewpoint on that because I, I know I was in the conversations when uh, organizations were looking to figure out um, how to reshape their their workforce. That was one of my one of my key areas. And there's just a bunch that goes on behind the curtain that that I was privy to. And I certainly wouldn't go into specifics because the purpose of the channel is not to demonize uh, any particular organization or industry or to demonize work because I think work is critical. But I think that gives me a unique perspective as I bring forward different topics to talk to you about. Um, and, you know, the other thing that's, that's critically important is when you, when you look at the numbers, um, the fact of the matter is, is people of color are generally underrepresented in these conversations, um, whether it's early retirement, whether it's on healthcare outcomes, whether it's on building wealth, financial independence. And so part of my responsibility as an individual, as an African-American man and part of an under, underrepresented group is not just to tell people what to do because there's a million YouTube channels out there telling people what to do. Here's how you get into a Roth IRA. Here's how you save money. Here's how you X, Y, and Z. But I think what, what happens is when, when people don't see people like themselves uh, doing the things that they want to do, then they just think that people like them don't do it. And I'm, I'm here to tell people that they do. And I and I, I get it. There's gonna be a lot of people out there with the idea that it shouldn't matter what color you are. And, um, you know, I, you know, and it's, it's not a matter of racism or any of that. I, that's not my angle. But I do think uh, different groups of people had different sets of particular circumstances. And I think people of color, um, you know, we haven't had as an example, uh, the opportunity to build wealth and to hand down wealth is a fairly new topic in the African-American community. Uh, you know, uh, Caucasian folks have had the opportunity to do that forever because they can go and get good jobs at Ford. They can go get good jobs at GM back when they were starting in the, in the 20s, 30s, and 40s. And it wasn't until the Civil Rights Act and Title VII and some of that le legislation that occurred that started to level out the, the, the workplace uh, um, and that's just prior to my generation, towards the, the tail end 
or, or I'm sorry, at the at just on the on the on the beginning of my generation is when all of those things really started to take hold. And so I'm really part of the first generation. And so there hasn't been a lot of uh, background for people that look like me to be told about these things. And so I feel like it's my responsibility because I have achieved a layer of success to tell my story and to help people understand my story. And does that mean everybody's going to take my story and run with my story? No. Does that mean that my story is only going to resonate with one group of people? No. Because right now I have, you know, over 200 uh, subscribers, which I appreciate. And I, I, you know, invite any of you to, to subscribe to the channel. Uh, but there are people, and I, I, I know for a fact that they don't all fall into one group. And I think, you know, a lot of the groups, a lot of the challenges that, that people that look like me had, um, my wife and I get into conversations and, and women have had similar types of challenges. And people that have immigrated from other countries have had similar but different types of challenges. And so again, I think the more we talk about these and the more we demystify some of the differences between individuals, the more we start to see that individuals at the basic level all kind of want the same sets of things. And it gives us and it helps us uh, really start looking at how we help each other. And I think if we're able to do that, um, then we really start to make movement on on really leveling the playing field like so many of us look for and, and talk about. And so, I, you know, so that's one of the, those are the reasons. And I, and you know, and it's funny because it's easy to have a technical type of conversation with somebody who has a, who has a basic knowledge of things um, or to talk about things uh, as a matter of fact with people that have a knowledge of things, but there's, there's, there's a lot of people that don't. And so, I try to be very practical and pragmatic in the, in, in, the, in the way that we have these conversations. I really think it's critical to, uh, to talk in a way that's easy to understand. I try not to use a lot of big words, try not to use a lot of complex concepts, and just try to keep it real. You know, I, I have a, a good friend of mine. We were talking one day, an uh, African-American gentleman, and I was telling him a, a, about a lesson that my father taught me. And he says, let me stop you there. He says, you realize that um, your experience doesn't uh, represent the same experience as a lot of other people. And I said, well, what do you mean? He says, well, what did your mother do when you're, I said, my mother was a technical writer. What did your dad do? My dad was an engineer. He said, okay, so let's stop there. Because you grew up in a two-parent household and you, you, both of your parents were uh, professional. And they had a certain amount of acumen and they were able to pass that on to you. And he said, I grew up and I grew up in abject poverty. I didn't know if I was going to eat the other day. I couldn't worry about a checking account because I had to make sure we had enough macaroni and cheese for me and my brothers and sisters. And so the view is fundamentally different. And so I try to model this channel in such a way that it doesn't, um, you know, it doesn't take for granted that people know uh, different things. And I'm, and I'm very passionate about that. And uh, it's one of the reasons that in, in a fairly short time, I've put out so much content because there's just a lot of information to know. And it's not about everybody being able to retire early. And it may not even be you that's able to retire early or retire at all, but it might be your kids. It might be your niece. It might be your nephew. It might be a friend of yours. Um, I've had countless people in my personal circles, as well as on uh, YouTube, ask me questions that have eventually helped them uh, realize uh, their dreams. And so the, the idea here is really not trying to put people on a path to be like me, because I, like I always say, you can always, I can, you can always be a second rate. You can only be a second rate me, but you can always be a first rate you. And I think there's a lot of us out there that are still trying to define the path. And so my goal is to really help you define your path with a set of information that comes from somebody that, that might be in a place that you're moving towards. Um, and so that's, um, so that's the, that's the, 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 the impetus for this channel and, and why I do it. But it, it brought me to an interesting question because, you know, as I, as I talked to my, as I talked to my friend about his situation, I said to myself, you know, maybe I can go in and do some type of executive coaching, you know, as a, as a profession. And I'm trying to find something here uh, as a profession. Because, you know, with my background and having had extensive experience in, in doing that type of coaching as a profession, 
you know, I could do that. And he, he said to me, he said, you know, you're already helping. He says, you have hundreds of thousands or you have th tens of thousands of viewers on your YouTube channel. <clears throat> All your friends, they seek you out as a person that's, that helps them with advice. And your advice is always good and it's always well grounded. And so, and the one thing that you've committed to me, this is him talking to me, is that you didn't want to have a schedule where you had to go in and you're doing exactly what you talk about on your channel, which is, would you do what you're doing now for free? And the fact of the matter is, is I do it for free. I don't even get paid on my YouTube channel yet, which is fine because I don't do it for that purpose, but I do it because I think there's a need and I think it's important for people to get good information. And I just know how difficult it is to get good information. And then, but then I started to think to myself, you know, did I really stop working or did I really retire or did I just stop working? And there's a, there's a little bit of a, of a distinction because, you know, when you talk about retirement, you talk about, uh, you know, not having a schedule, being able to get up and do what it is that you want. So I want to talk a little bit about, about that today. But before I, I go into that, I wanted to kind of preface it with this quote that I got. And that's what I was looking up earlier. So I apologize for looking down. I know that's one of the rules of public speaking, but it's a quote by Howard Washington Thurman. And what Howard Washington Thurman says is, don't ask yourself what the world needs. Ask yourself what makes you come alive and then go and do that because what the world needs is to have people come alive. And, you know, it's pretty interesting because the one thing I will say about my journey at this point is that, you know, it's not about what do I need to do or what does the world need, but what is it that I, what is it that I love to do? And, and I love to help people. I've always been in service to people. And so I started to think about that in relation to the question, because the fact is, is I'm busier probably now than I've ever been in my life. Um, you know, I've talked about in previous videos how every day is kind of a blank slate and every week is a blank slate and every month is a blank slate. But I have things to do just about every day. But the difference is, is the things that I'm able to do, I'm able to, number one, do well. And number two, I'm able to um, I'm able to do things that fill my cup. You know, I, I look at my life like a coffee cup and, you know, coffee cups either do one of two things. Either stuff is evaporating out of it or you're drinking. It, of course, it's coming out of it or it's going in. And what I try to do is I try to continually fill my cup. So at some point, my cup is going to run over, but it's running over with just all of this goodness. And, you know, it's just like the kids when you're when you drink Kool-Aid as a kid or you drink coffee as an adult. What'd you do when the when the Kool-Aid spilled out as a kid? You put your lips down there and you sucked up all that goodness off the counter because, you know, there was just so much goodness in that Kool-Aid. Well, it's the same thing. I mean, it's, 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 it's no different. And, and I know there's generations behind me. I, I look at my YouTube demographics and I see, you know, between 25 and 44 is a, are about 25% of my viewers. So I know that some of us may not necessarily have that same experience with the Kool-Aid, but, you know, the fact of the matter is, the Kool-Aid thing is universal, and I used to drink the heck out of some Kool-Aid when I was a kid. And so if, you, if you're like me, you know about it. Let me know if, if you've had you know, those kind of experiences. Because again, the, the idea here is really, I, I, just, I do things that, that fill my cup, um, that I love to do. And I do things that I'm passionate about. Um, there's, I've always had a lot of interest. And the, the thing that my wife loves, one of the things my wife loves about me but that uh, she makes, she laughs about sometimes is that I just have this zest for life. Like I just have a, I'm just driven towards things that I find interesting and I go all in on them. I don't, I don't waste time or as they say, I ain't got no time for shugging and jiving. And so I, I, I go in and I try to do them well. And so some of the, the passions that I have or, you know, one of them is gardening. I, I love to get out and garden. I, I, you know, I just, today I just processed some onions. I had a bag of onions that I gave to my neighbor, and then I harvested the rest of them and dried them out. I have another probably ten pounds that I have now uh, inside of our cupboard that uh, that I had. So, and I, I picked some beans yesterday, and I'm, I'm really excited. I'm really geeked out because for about the last three or four years, I've been having real big problems with my tomatoes. 
then I went and bought some tomato starts this year and I planted them and I actually have Roma tomatoes. And, and you know, if you know anything about me, I, I don't really like tomatoes, but I like Roma tomatoes. I, I don't know what it is about Roma tomatoes, but I like Roma tomatoes. And I, I have five plants of Roma tomatoes growing right now. So it's just incredible. Um, I'm growing some beans and I have these, these pole beans that have grown up to about eight feet. The bushes for those beans have grown up about eight feet. And it's like a puzzle because every time I go out there, I'll come in with, two, I'll come back in the house with two or three beans. My wife goes out there and she gets a whole handful and maybe it's her attention to detail. Uh, maybe she's taking beans from in the house and taking them outside. Although I never admit saying that to her because happy life, happy wife or, or whatever, however that goes. But on, on a serious note, I, uh, I go after those beans and I, I don't see them. And then she sees them and we have a bunch of beans. I've got peppers. I just brought in a bell pepper this evening. Um, I've got squash, you know, I've got my squash growing and my cucumber plant is just out of control, but you know, it's, I'm passionate about my garden and it's not, you know, I have it on my Instagram channel. So if you follow me on Ask Sabado, you'll see some of my previous harvests and some of that, uh, some of what I do in the garden and, and just more about me and, and what I do with my, with my time, because I think relationships, which is what we're building, they build it in an ecosystem and it's, I don't, I don't dish out a bunch of stuff on, on any platform because I don't think the world is about that. It's about being positive and enjoying the gifts that we have. But anyway, so yeah, gardening is, is one of my passions. The other one is, is playing golf. Um, where I live, it gets up to you know 100 degrees. I just looked today and it said that next Saturday, it's supposed to be 119. And uh, then I looked again and it said 106. And so I said, whew. I'm glad it's going to be 106 and not 119, but 106 is still hot, but I go and play golf in it, you know, and, and, and the hottest part of the day here is usually about five, six o'clock. We go in about 11. And so we're finishing up about that time. And I walk the golf courses because that helps me uh, stay slim and trim in my, in my advanced age, as they say. Um, so I'm able to, uh, so I go out and walk the golf courses and it's every time I walk the course, it's about six miles. And I, is, is it tough? Yeah. Does it, do my knees hurt sometimes? Yeah. Cause I hurt my knees playing basketball, hurt my ankles playing basketball. Um, does it hurt a little bit? Sure. It does. does my back get tight. Yeah. But I just, I just love doing it. And so I, I go out and I spend, I go maybe twice a week and, and, and the heat and, and when it was cold, I was out in the cold, I'll go out in the rain. It, it really doesn't matter. I just, I just enjoy the game. I enjoy the sport and the camaraderie that comes with it. Um, another thing I love to do is, uh, you know, reviewing information on social topics, you know, right now is a, I, I just think, uh, without getting too deep into it, I think right now is a, uh, is a tough time for, for America. And I think, uh, part of the reason for that is, um, up until maybe the last decade, we didn't have access to as much information than we have now. And I think, inf I think having access to information is good. But then you have the information coming from all of these different sources. And so I think part of the challenge is, is that there's so much information coming into so many people and, and some, some information for kids when they're too young to pro be able to process the information and adults that they may not have the context to truly appreciate or understand or critically think about that information. I think it just creates uh, a challenge uh, for people because what it has a tendency to do is as opposed to people discussing ideas, I think people then get into fights and conflicts about ideas and they draw different conclusions about ideas than the conclusions that should have been initially drawn. And I think it just sows division. And so, you know, so what I like to do is, again, because people tend to come to me and they trust my opinion and they trust my thoughts, even if they don't agree. And I don't, trust me, I'm not the most agreeable person in the world. And I don't expect and I don't want everybody to agree with me. Um, as painful as that is sometimes, but I try to make sure that I keep an, uh, a handle on different social events and, and what's uh, going on and, and what the truth, the objective truth is about um, a thing. Um, you know, sometimes there's, there's people that make comments or they'll say things and I don't like them, but you know, in some cases they're not wrong. Um, sometimes they're actually correct, but the way that they're saying it is different or, or something of that nature. So I, I try to stay up on top of those things and, and do a lot of research. Cause I just, I just like having information I, as, as a, as a human resources executive, 
you know, we didn't make decisions, but we brokered information. And so as a, as, as an information broker, I, I'm not doing that for a profession now, but that's just who I am as a, as an individual. And again, that, and I don't even know half of what I probably should know on most of the things that I should have information on, but I, I try to do that. So I'm very passionate about that. Uh, teaching myself how to play the piano. You know, if you look back, you see my piano behind me. Um, you know, I'm not going to become like the black Beethoven or anything like that, but I like playing. I've always loved music. Um, you know, above me here, I've got a, a couple hundred or maybe a thousand records or so uh, after paring those down. I have my turntable here. I've got my DJ mixer there. I've got my speakers sitting on either side of me. But I love the music. And so, if, and I've always wanted to be able to make the music as opposed to just listen and curate other people's music. And so I've taught myself how to play the piano. Am I very good? I don't need to be, but I could, I could play a couple of songs. And so if you, if there's a song you'd like me to play and record a video on, let me know and I'll see what I can do. And I, my, my, my library is very limited, but I, I will play a song if, if enough people ask me to. And it's one of the songs that I can play. And we probably have to negotiate the song because some songs I just, I just can't do because I can't read those notes. Um, you know, the other one is, is spending time with uh, friends and family. When, when I was working, what I found was um, I'd spend time with people, but a lot of the people I spent time with was just to fill a slot, an opening that I had between different obligations because I had to fit so much in to such a limited amount of time. And those of you that are, that are working, you know, there's, you know, you have different types of employees. You have some people that just say, look, I'm going to go eight to the gate and they're in and they're out. And there's some people that don't, they don't even show up to work. But a lot of us, because we want to do a great job, will go above and beyond. And so that's working nights, that's working weekends, that's doing uh, a lot of extra work in order to do an excellent job. And so, you know, doing an excellent job comes at a cost and that cost is your time. I mean, I personally think at this point, time is uh, work takes away from your time, but you, you, I ended up losing slots. So I build these relationships that are real categorical in nature. So it's, you're this kind of friend, you're this kind of friend, you're this kind of friend. And even if I wanted to expand that friendship, I didn't have the time or the capacity to do it because I was so burnt out from work and I didn't have the time to really spend to do that. But now I have that time. And so if I say, like, as an example, I have a neighbor of mine that sent me a message the other day and he says, hey, I'm going to the dump. Do you have anything that needs to be dumped? And um, I said, yeah, I got a couple of things. I said, you know, I'll go with you. So that way, you know, you're not just taking my stuff and I'm, I'm putting you to undo labor. And then he just sent me a text message a few minutes ago, funny enough, and said, I'll see you at eight o'clock uh, tomorrow. And I thought to myself, what did I commit to? Because now I'm forced into setting an alarm clock when I normally don't do that. But again, you, the relationships that I'm building are just stronger relationships. Current relationships that I've had for years are just getting so much better. I'm such a, I, I think I've become such a better friend. I think I've become a better husband. I think I've become a better, you know, relative to, to, people that I know because I'm able to take the time and think about that. And then even meeting new people, I've, I've been able to make a, a few new friends. And, um, you know, it's just the, the depth of those friendships, I think, are a lot different uh, and they're a lot deeper than I had time for before. And so, again, and these are all things that I'm constantly doing when I, when I ask myself, am I, did I really retire? Um, you know, the other one is creating his YouTube channel. You know, the, the, you know, I go around YouTube and I look, I'm going to be honest with you. You know, there's, there's a whole bunch of channels out there in YouTube about how to, um, you know, get a million followers and how to create the super YouTube channel and all these things. But the reality is, is the one thing that I have that a lot of people don't have is I have the experience and I retired at 51 and I had a career where I was able to make certain specific moves that helped me grow my career in such a way I was able to retire at 51 and, and I learned a little bit of foresight. And so I, you know, I, I don't think any of you out there watching my channel are looking for like those Mr. Beast type channels where you're going to get a million followers and it becomes a super channel. But I, I think that you like the fact that it's a small channel with a real person that's not overly produced, that gives good information, that gives real information, at least gives you information that you can walk away from. And you could you can either agree with it or disagree with it, but at least you know it's a real perspective from a real person. And I think the one thing that I think is always an opportunity on a platform like YouTube are people being genuine um, and people telling you 
uh, the real truth as opposed to what they think it is that you want to hear. And so, you know, that's something that I'm really passionate about it just as a human being. And it's, it's translating to this passion for this channel. Um, again, I, I'm, I'm extremely humbled by the fact that I have 230 something people that are, uh, that subscribe to my channel and watch my shorts and, uh, sounds weird, watch my shorts, but you know, watch my shorts and watch my videos and comment and, and, and continue to come back and, and support what we do. And, you know, I just, I just think it's incredible because I've, I've always thought of myself as just kind of this average person, but when I do an inventory, I've had the opportunity to do some things that I, I think can share. So I'm, I'm really passionate about that. It's, it's probably one of my most passionate, um, endeavors. Um, the other one, and, and I think the last one that I'll talk about here is just helping others. And, you know, I spend a lot of time just trying to seek out opportunities to help others, even in so far as, uh, when we have food, instead, we don't waste food. We take food to the food pantries for uh, underprivileged people because there's a lot of people out there that may be working, but it's just expensive to live. Living is tough. And so it, it helps them out. Or if it's a person asks me for some advice, uh, some of you have, a have asked me for advice on the channel in the comments. And I, you know, one of the reasons that I respond to every comment is because I, I always want, you know, the fact that you took time out of your busy life to listen to me and, 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 and even further ask me a question, it's my responsibility to answer your question. It's my responsibility to help you in any way that I can. And so, you know, just helping people. So it's, so, you know, it's funny cause I, after, after this conversation with my, with my friend and looking at the, you know, talking about doing executive coaching and, and all of that, I, you know, yeah, I started asking myself, you know, did I really retire? And, and the fact is, is I did. And I, I think it, it goes to the to, to the bigger point that retirement isn't about, you know, not working and just sitting on the couch and doing nothing, because I, I think we're all wired to um, to want to achieve something. And the fact of the matter is, is, you know, you're not on my channel here because you just want to sit on the couch and do nothing. I just happen to be some random guy on YouTube. Most people aren't going to look for how to retire early. If they're that type of individual, they want to get perspective, especially, and, and, you know, if there's any retired people already out there, um, you know, let me know in the comments. Cause I, I think the comments are because are, are great because other people read the comments. And so it adds a broader perspective besides just you and I, but you know, even retired people like to have things to do. I have a, I have an old boss that had retired and went back to work and he told me he got bored and went back to work after retirement. You know, that happens a lot because we always want to be, we always want to be doing something. And so, uh, but the, the question I ask myself is always, is this a something that I want to do? Or is this a something that I'm doing because uh, somebody else um, is asking me to do it or because I have to do it to feed my family? And and I always ask, I, I ask people all the time. Um, they say, I love my job or I'm too valuable for my job. And I ask the same question every single time. I say, if you won the lottery, would you do what you're doing now? And if the answer is yes, then, you know, then you're all good. You don't need to talk to me about it. But the fact is most people wouldn't. Oh, I quit my job or I'd go do this or I'd go do that or I'd, I'd do something else. You know, I had one person I know that's a professional chef that, um, you know, we talked and I said, look, you could open your own organization to feed the homeless or feed the needy and have other people execute your recipes. You know, it's it just changes how things are. And I think the two things that... Um, we don't spend enough time on it. Maybe I'll do a, an episode on that. Or, but the two things that I think uh, in the bigger picture are, are distracted most against are uh, money and time. You know, I don't think as Americans we have a very good idea of, of how money works. And I think that um, because we're all conditioned and institutional, as I like to call it, to work, we uh, don't understand the value of time. And, and we feel lucky to have these jobs, but like I was telling my friend, that the reality is is that your time is so valuable that somebody's going to pay you for your for your expertise, and so you know, and so as a so it changes the power balance because these organizations need your expertise uh, more than you need the money that they're giving you. It doesn't always feel that way because you know none of us want to be broke. So, so the question, the, the ultimate question to the or. The ultimate question, the answer, the ultimate answer to the question is, did I retire or did I just stop working? I retired. Um, I, uh, 
you know, I'm doing what I want to do when I want to do it. There's some days I don't want to do anything at all. Um, you know, I, I've started to call myself Sabado because every day is like Saturday. And it's, you know, like I was telling you about my neighbor um, and, and uh, going to the dump. And I'm thinking, man, I got to set my alarm clock so I can get up and go with this cat to the dump. But then the fact is I could come home and take a nap and it's not a big deal. It's not like I'm going to work and I do eight hours worth of work. Probably going to be there for an hour and then come home and then have a couple cups of coffee and then take a nap and do that for the rest of the day or watch TV or practice the piano or make another YouTube video or something like that. So, you know, so again, it's, it's about trying to live the life that we want to lead. And I, I think that, you know, so many of us, uh, particularly those of us in underrepresented groups come from such a place of scarcity because it's, you know, it, it hasn't been about finding happiness. The struggle has been staying alive and, and moving forward that, um, you know, we haven't had those broader conversations. And so my goal is to bring that broader conversation to the to the rest of the world and help others that may not be part of those groups, um, you know, understand uh, just that perspective. Because I think if people start to understand how we're all the same, then that breaks down the walls of division and we end up in a better place. And I, that's certainly played in my life. Um, and I think that could play for the rest of us as well, because fortunately, the one thing I do love about YouTube is that it's a global platform and and there's people all around the world watching this video and corresponding and all that so and if you leave a comment you'll know um and again let me know where you're from i'd, I'd like to know um because i like to know who's who's who and what's what and and some of that so i'm, I'm just again i'm an information guy so on that note um you know i just ask that if you like this content and you want to get notified you can always subscribe to the channel um, you know, you get the, uh, you can hit that like button. And then if you want to get notified, you can get, uh, you could hit the bell and get notified of, of new content as it comes out. And the, the other thing I, I'd say is, you know, you can share this. Um, you know, the one thing that one piece of feedback that I've consistently got is, you know, I, I just found this channel. This is great content. Keep it going. And so it's, it's never a bunch of unnecessariness. Um, and it's stuff that I think as people find it, they like it. Uh, feel free to share it um, with with anybody, and then you know. And if you want to, anybody wants to connect or um, become part of the part of the Sabado as Sabado ecosystem. Again, I'm never going to try to sell you anything. It's, it's just not that kind of situation for me. Uh, you could join my my Instagram uh, and and send me private messages, or you can go into my Facebook and um, you know send me private messages. So either way, um, you know, I look forward to to our our continued relationship. And on that note, I just say have a good uh, rest of your day and I will talk to you soon.